Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu salamu ala rasulullah. We continue reading from Imam al-Ghazali's Jawaih al-Quran, the Jews of the Quran. We, uh, we are using Muhammad ibn Qasim's the translation. And uh, we are on page 68 approximately. We have covered uh, of the uh, of the creation of, of uh, God's creation, the creatures that God uh, created amongst the, um, the smallest whom Imam Ghazali uh, mentioned. He mentioned the, uh, the mosquitoes, the flies, and uh, we have the spiders and the bees that we did not cover. Why he mentioned them, he... Uh, because he said that the uh, um, including the um, the mercy in Ar Rahman Ar Rahim in the first chapter in the Fatah and the opening chapter of the uh, of the Quran, he said that he created each one of them in the uh, best possible fashion. فَنَوْ خَلَقْ كُلَّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمْ عَلَى أَكْمَلِ الْأَنْوَاعِ أَكْمَلْ It's basically uh, perfection. And the best to Afdalha, and um, it, he granted um, he granted each one of these uh, insect, um, insects what it needs. Then he Imam Ghazali went into details. Uh, it's fascinating the uh, narrative, and this is why we continue, inshallah with the spiders, and then we move to the uh, bees and so on. Regarding the spiders, he said, Imam Ghazali, Rahmanullah, look at the spider. How God has created its limbs and has taught it the device of weaving. Uh, taught it the device of weaving, taught it the device of weaving. Well, the device is part of its uh, own body. I'm talking about the translation. In Arabic, وَعَلَّمَهَا Basically, the hila. It's how... Now, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, created in the spider. It is part of it. It's, it's instinct. It's, this is its physiognomy. It's not that the spider will go somewhere and uh, fetch basically the material for its uh, web so look at the spider how god has created the slims and has taught it the device of weaving there's no device here and how he has taught it the tricks of hunting with uh, without doings unlike the mosquito unlike the the fly that they need to fly around well for he has created for it the it's sticky saliva by which it connects itself with a corner lying in wait for the passing of a mosquito close to itself it throws itself onto the mosquito catches it shackles it with its threads composed from its saliva and thus disables it from escaping until it eats it or puts it in store now we know today that this is not really uh, uh, this is what they could see uh, with their own eyes at the uh, as much as they could see with the uh, with their eyes microscopes were not uh, known and that's what we know today so it's not uh, it's not belittling, belittling the narrative but since we mentioned this I think it's we ought to uh, to say something uh the uh the spiders have uh, uh spinnerets uh, to weave the uh it's uh, silk if you will and uh, it is rather than um, the saying that the saliva it means the front uh you talk about the uh, front of its uh, of its body the spinnerets are usually 
more to the uh, uh, to the rear. In fact, in uh, one could see that the uh, the spinnerets could be sticking out in certain uh, species. S spiders have uh, uh, typically uh, six spinnerets, but they could be eight. They could be four. They could be two. It uses uh, you know. Uh, uh, a protein and it, to be uh, to be strong the di the direction itself is is important but let me put this way it's the spinnerets uh, that the spiders uh, use to create these uh, to build these webs but also they use the uh, the same uh, silk to uh, transfer sperm also to uh, to uh, to cover their uh, the you know like egg cases if you uh, if you will look at the spider's methods of weaving its house how God has guided it and its weaving according to geometrical proportion in the order of uh, warp and woof look at the bee that's different look at the bee and the innumerable wonders of its gathering honey and uh, in the tra in the translation in brackets it uh, it did put uh, it, the translator used uh, producing <laughs> Which is uh, which is uh, of course uh, an understanding different from that of uh, Al Ghazali. The uh, the bees, of course, they do not produce, they do not gather honey, they gather nectar. Uh, they do have a gland that uh, uh, turns the sugar and honey into uh, wax, wax flakes. So what they gather, they gather the nectar from the uh, from the uh, flowers, and one might be surprised to to know that uh, in order to produce to produce about one kilogram of honey, the bees would have uh, uh, traveled uh, about one million uh, trips, and that. Uh, that's something really, subhanAllah. We should like to make you aware of the geometry of its hive. It is built on the figure of the hexagon. When Imam Ghazali aptly explains why it's the best uh, form, subhanAllah, in terms of saving space. He said in order that the, that space may not be narrow for its companies, who become crowded in one place in a great number. If it should build its hive circular, there would remain outside the circular hive an empty space since circles do not contiguous, since circles are not contiguous to one another. Well, they are. That's not the point. Uh, uh, the circumference might really touch the circumference. I mean, you can imagine uh, four circles where the uh, circumference uh, uh, touches two in each of uh, the uh, four. Uh, but that leaves plenty of space wasted. Remember that it speaks about the, the, the lack of taras, like you talk about really compact in the sense of not wasting. The taras is exactly like when, you, when, when the imam says tarasu in the, in the, in the uh, just before the beginning of the congregational prayer, tarasu, just do not leave space between uh, yourselves, shoulder to shoulder, foot to foot. 
as much as possible. Do not leave space. Likewise, all are all other figures. As the squares, they are contiguous. Like, of course, you can they can uh, fit together without leaving space between them to another. But the shape of the uh, of the bee is inclined to roundness, and so inside the hive there would be would remain empty corners, unless the uh, hive itself is perfectly square according to these uh, to these squares as in a circular house hmm. there would remain an empty corner outside the house that's none of the figures other than that the hexagon approaches the circle approach the circular figure in, con in contiguity and this is known by geometrical proof. Consider then how God has guided the bee to the characteristic of this figure. The guidance here in the uh, in the uh, if we speak about um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the Quran, use the uh, the uh, Awha in term. Literally, really, it's uh, the same word like in uh, um, Revelation. Uh, so he, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, instilled in its instinct. So it's really, uh, uh, it, it could not produce another shape. Let me put it this way. No. And the uh, the Arabic really in the uh, he says that uh, guided hada okay khasiyat hada al shakl so ultimately consider then how how God has guided the bee to the characteristic of this figure this is a sample from the wonders of God's works and His kindness and mercy to His creation. For the lowest constitutes the an evidence of the highest. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his mercy guided the uh, the bees uh, created them to uh, to uh, make uh, honey and wax out of the uh, of the nectar into uh, honey and ultimately also into uh, wax and guided them to uh, have these hives in that uh, design and they dry the uh, the uh, the the honey and then they store it so when we as human beings go and that uh, enjoy that honey the uh, no. people should uh, Leave the bees enough honey. <coughs> yes, sustainability. Even in the long lifetimes of many men, it is impossible thoroughly to study these strange events. That is the part of them which is revealed to man, and that is surely small in relation to the part of that part which is not revealed. This knowledge is exclusively appropriate to God and the angels. Sometimes you will find remarks of this kind in the Book of Gratitude, Kitab Sabr wa Shukr, and the Book of Love. That's that is in the uh, in the uh, revival of the religious sciences. Seek them if you are fit for them. Otherwise, close your eyes to the sign to the signs of God's mercy and do not look at them. Do not graze in the field of knowledge of his works, of Allah's uh, works, of all these uh, uh, signs in the uh, in the universe and nature in ourselves. And do not be a spectator of it, but be occupied with the poems of Al-Mutanabi, wonders of the syntax of grammar of Sibawai, 
consequences of Ibn al-Haddad in the rare matters of divorce and tricks of argument and theology. These are more suitable for you, for your worth is according to the worth of your ambition. Where I intended <coughs> to counsel you. Where I intended to counsel you. My counsel would not profit you. If God willed to pervert you. And whatsoever of mercy God bestows upon men may be withheld. by none and whatsoever he withholds may not be released by any after that so about the uh, the council wala yanfa'akum nusahi in aradtu an ansaha lakum in kana allah yuridu an yughiyakum huwa rabbukum wa ilayhi turja'un then ما يفتح الله لناس من رحمة فلا ممسك له وما يمسك فلا مرسل له من بعده وهو العزيز الحكيم لتسرتين to the main aim الله سبحانه وتعالى قال we do say كل ميسر لما خلق له كل ميسر لما خلق له as if people are guided to we think we choose in the absolute sense, but really, and uh, if one reflects on one's um, path to where he or she is, subhanAllah, one is definitely guided in the Lazo or it's the other way around, it's being misled because of whatever. Uh, bad decisions, wrong decisions that one makes along the way. So let us return to the main aim for our motive here is to make you aware of a sample of divine mercy in the creation of all the worlds. These are magnificent things. These are beautiful things. Uh, one would still be astonished uh, there's a there's a book uh, called Sophie about that introduces philosophy through a story um, a young girl starts uh, receiving uh, letters explaining really uh, philosophy but what I would like to uh, to highlight here is that in one of these letters it, it, it says that the philosophers is someone who does not stop, uh, does not cease, you know, uh, uh, being astonished by, and you know, even the smallest, simplest, uh, tiniest natural phenomenon. Some of these things that we have just mentioned, a bee uh, collecting nectar from a, uh, a flower pot or a flower bed, uh, in your garden or somewhere else. This is uh, an amazing scene. Butterflies, uh, the flowers themselves. We have normalized. The problem is that the children, the child in you does not cease to be astonished. But we get rid of this child by normalizing uh, with these wonders in the uh, in the universe and this is why some atheists simply keep uh, mumbling about the universe being ugly the universe being in chaos the, it is the most orderly the design is fascinating the design within the human being the design within uh, the animal kingdom if you uh, if you will 
there's there's beauty uh, Imam al-Ghazali Imam al-Ghazali uh, in the book of uh, of patience and gratitude of uh, thankfulness he says that that which is all these ni'am all this divine grace simply because it's really open to everyone it is accessible to everyone such, such as simply looking at nature looking at the universe looking at the sky we stop doing that because precisely because it's there all the time we have normalized how you are going to be thankful when you have you have normalized to the degree that you stopped seeing it as an emma then you don't you don't get astonished you don't really praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, his creation its connection with his words, Master of the Day of Judgment, is that it indicates his mercy on the day of recompense at the time of granting the favor of perpetual kingdom, that is paradise, in exchange for belief in the sentence of testimony and for worship. In Arabic, basically, في مقابل كلمة وعبادة. The كلمة, as this is mentioned here, the when they say the kalima and the concept of worship of course there is that which is uh, specified such as the five daily prayers fasting ramadan pilgrimage the uh, regular alms giving but then it could be extended to uh, a wide range of uh, activities the intention makes it uh, an act of, uh, of worship to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Its explanation would take a long time. What we intend to say is that really there is no repetition in the Quran. If you see anything that appears to be repeated in it, look at what precedes it and what follows it, like contextualize it. But the idea <coughs> If you see anything that appears to be repeated in it, look at what precedes it and what follows it so that the additional benefit of its apparent repetition may be revealed to you. In the words of God, Master of the Day of Judgment, Maliki Yawm al-Din, Maliki Yawm al-Din, Maliki Yawm al-Din, here it's Maliki Yawm al-Din, are indication of the life to come. Maliki Yawm al-Din, the Master of the Judgment, the Possessor of the Day of Judgment, uh, the Owner in, you know, uh, of the Day uh, of Judgment, Malik Yawdin, the King on, of the Day of Judgment. And he is the Malik, subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are indications, the, the words of God, Malik Yawdin, are an indication of the life to come, which is the uh, concern of one of the fundamental divisions of Quranic verses together with an indication of the meaning of kingdom and the master which belongs to the attributes of divine glory. The words of God, you alone we worship, comprise two great parts. One is worship with sincerity in relation to him, especially, and this is the spirit of the straight path, as you will know it from the book of vice of influence and ostentation from the work of the revival of course of the religious sciences the second is the belief that none other than God deserves worship and this is the essence of belief in divine unity divine oneness Tawhid. this is achieved by the abandonment of belief in man's ability in the human being's ability and power and by the knowledge that God is alone in the ex execution of all works and that man is not independent by himself and without his help so that's his words you alone we worship 
هي كنعبد are an indication of making this soul beautiful by worship and sincerity while his words you alone we implore for help are an indication of its purification from belief in partnership and from paying attention to man's ability and power we have already mentioned that traversing the straight path is supported by two things one is purification of the soul by the denial of that which is not befitting and the other is making it beautiful by the achievement of that which should be achieved and these two are comprised in these two sentences from the sum total of the sentences of surah of opening inshallah we we'll leave it there and we'll continue with the rest of the uh, the um, the surah in the next session bi'idhnillah عز وجل أنت الذن سبحانك اللهم وحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته